you must have seen some of your house plants grow in this direction in this way sometimes towards the sides instead of growing upright you must have also observed some trees on the road or in a forest growing in very weird different directions have you ever wondered why it happens well the answer to why it happens is usually these plants are growing in this direction in response to sunlight they are growing wherever they find more sunlight going a bit further than that have you ever wondered what causes the plants to grow like this they must have some substance inside them something inside them that is causing them to bend and grow like this well the substances that regulate the growth of the plant are known as plant growth regulators and the growth may be either promoted by growth promoters or inhibited by growth inhibitors by promotion of growth i mean increasing in the length of the stem growing of the roots flowering etc and by growth inhibition i mean prevention of seed germination inducing the dormancy of seeds etc so all these functions this promotion of growth and inhibition of growth are regulated by plant hormones that are also known as plant growth regulators just like how we have hormones in our body that control every major function plants also have hormones in them that control their growth in the category of growth promoters we're going to see auxins gibberellins and cytokinins in the category of growth inhibitors we're going to see abscisic acid and then we're going to talk about ethylene also which sort of fits in both categories it is a growth promoter as well as a growth inhibitor in this video we'll focus on the growth promoters auxins gibberellins and cytokinins we'll tackle abscisic acid and ethylene in a different video First let's start with auxins. So auxins is derived from a Greek word that means to grow or increase. So from this itself you can surmise that auxins are responsible for the growth of the plant. Auxins uh, were the first plant hormones to be identified by scientists and it is now one of the widely studied hormones as well. Auxins have a lot of functions. Remember earlier we talked about how plants bend in response to sunlight? Well that phenomenon is known as phototropism and that phototropism is governed by auxins. So take this plant for example. It is receiving more sunlight from this side and this part of the plant is shaded. It is not facing the sun. So what happens is on this side of the plant auxin production increases and as auxin production increases the auxins cause the cells to elongate. the cells on this side to elongate and as the cells elongate it causes the stem to bend and hence the plant also bends towards the sunlight so that's how auxins govern phototropism which is the bending of the plant in response to sunlight geotropism which is the bending of the plant in response to gravity the shoot grows against gravity the root grows in the direction of gravity so all that is governed by auxins as well Auxins are also involved in the formation of roots. Auxins act on the root primordial cells and cause the root formation and elongation of roots. Another major function of auxins is apical dominance. Now what is apical dominance? You know that there are two types of meristems in a plant. Apical meristem is the one at the tip of the shoot and lateral meristems are the ones at the sides of the shoot. So apical dominance is when auxins cause the shoots to elongate for the apical bud to keep developing apical meristems to keep developing while actively suppressing the growth of the lateral buds this is why when people prune trees they often cut the tips of the trees they cut the tips of the shrubs they are pruning when the tips are cut auxin production decreases which then causes the growth of the lateral buds so the trees become bushier instead of growing taller this is also seen in tea plantations as well that's why they keep pruning the top of the plants all the time in tea plantations now what are the different types of auxins there are two types of auxins one type is naturally occurring auxins like indole 3 acetic acid which was incidentally the first auxin to be discovered and indole butyric acid Synthetic auxins include naphthalene acetic acid and 2,4-D, which is 2,4-dichlorophenoxyacetic. 
So naturally occurring auxins are produced in the plant itself while synthetic auxins are produced in industries and they have a variety of uses in the agriculture and horticulture industry. Remember how I told you auxins promote the growth of plants? The synthetic auxins are often sprayed on young plants to make them grow faster. With this let's move on to the next type of growth promoters which is gibberellins. To me this is a funny word. The name gibberellins was derived from the gibberella species fungus. This fungus is where this hormone was first isolated. So that's why this hormone was called gibberellins. Now gibberellins also have a lot of functions similar to auxins. They also promote growth. And how does gibberellins promote growth? Gibberellins promote stem elongation. So they promote stem elongation by increasing the distance between two internodes. Initially the plant has two very closely located internodes. Then the space increases and then the distance between the internodes has increased a lot. This increase in internode distance is due to the action of gibberellins. Gibberellins are also involved in flowering and pollination, specifically the growth of the pollen tube that is also governed by gibberellins. Gibberellins are also involved in seed germination. Under favorable conditions, the seed has to germinate to form a new plant, right? That is also governed by gibberellins. Now, gibberellins promote growth by delaying the senescence. Now, what is senescence? Senescence means aging. So, what happens is when the plant is aging, the leaves especially, they grow old. They lose chlorophyll, they lose chloroplasts and they become yellow in color and they eventually fall off. That aging of leaves is known as senescence, not just leaf, aging of any plant part is known as senescence. Gibberellins promote growth by delaying the senescence of plant parts. Now, like auxins, there are different types of gibberellins as well. Gibberellins are mainly acidic in nature, so they are named like that, gibberellic acid 1, gibberellic acid 2, etc. And so far, more than 100 gibberellins have been discovered, making gibberellins one of the most widely studied plant hormones. Next, we'll move on to cytokinins. The word cytokinin is derived from the term cytokinesis, which is what cytokinin does. It promotes cytokinesis. Now, if you remember from earlier chapter, cytokinesis is the actual process of cell division where the cytoplasm divides. So, from this itself, you can guess that cytokinins are involved in promoting cell division. Not just cell division, cytokinins are also involved in cell differentiation. What is differentiation? It is when the meristematic cell develops and differentiates into a permanent mature cell. So cytokinins are involved in cell division and differentiation which is why they are often found in more quantities at young parts of the plant like shoot bud, flower buds etc. Cytokinins unlike auxins promote lateral growth. So lateral growth is when the lateral meristems grow and from there a new branch or a new flower emerges. So cytokinins promote lateral growth as you can see in this image. This is the main axis of the shoot. So auxins will act on the apical meristem and cause the shoot to become longer. While cytokinins will act on the lateral meristems and promote lateral growth. Like gibberellins, cytokinins also delay leaf senescence. They make sure that the leaf stays attached to the plant for a longer period of time. There are different types of cytokinins as well. The adenine type includes zeatin and kinetin. Although kinetin was the first uh, cytokinin to be discovered, it was not discovered from plants, it was discovered from herring sperm DNA. Zeatin is what is naturally occurring in plants. There is another type of cytokinin, phenylurea type. The example is thiodiazuron. This also doesn't naturally occur in plants. So far, whatever plant growth regulators that we have seen have a variety of uses in the agriculture and horticulture industry. The synthetic versions of the plant growth regulators or PGRs are often sprayed on young plants to increase their growth, to promote their growth and make them grow faster. Some examples include spraying of sugarcane with gibberellins to increase the length of sugarcane. With this, we'll end this video. In the next video, we'll pick up ethylene and abscisic acid.